So now let us start with restrictions on voting rights. Notwithstanding anything contained in this Act, the articles of company may provide that no member shall exercise any voting right in respect of any shares registered in his name on which any calls or any other sums presently payable by him have not been paid or in regard to which the company has exercised any right of leave. A company shall not accept uh, shall not ex accept on the ground specified in um, subsection 1 prohibit any member from exercising this voting right on other ground. On a, take, uh, on a poll taken at a meeting of a company, a member entitled to more than one vote on his proxy wherein uh, allowed or other, other person entitled to vote for him as the case may be, need not uh, if he votes or uh, use all his votes are passed in the same way or all the votes he uses. So, restriction of voting rights, there is nothing such uh, contained in the Act, but the articles of the company may provide for certain restrictions on voting rights in respect of any shares which is registered in his name. And uh, then a company shall not, on the grounds which are specified by the company, shall not restrict any member to vote in the meeting. Then voting by show of hands. At a general meeting, a resolution put to the vote of a meeting shall, unless a poll is demanded under section 109 or the voting is carried out electronically, shall be decided on a show of hands. A declaration by the chairman of the meeting of the press passing of a resolution or otherwise by show of hands under subsection 1 and an entry uh, to to that effect in the books containing the minutes of the meeting of the company shall be conclusive evidence of the fact of passing of uh, such a resolution or otherwise voting through electronic means. The central government may prescribe the class or classes of companies and the matter in which a member may exercise his right to vote by the electronic means. Demand for poll. Before or uh, on the declaration of the result of the voting on any resolution, on show of hands, a poll may be ordered to be taken by the chairman of the meeting on his own motion and shall be ordered to be taken by him on the demand made by uh, in the in that behalf, in the case of uh, case a company having a share capital by by the members present in person or by proxy were allowed and uh, not having less than one tenth of the total voting power or holding shares on which an aggregate sum of not less than five uh, lakh rupees or such higher amount as may be prescribed has been paid up. And in the case of any other company by any member or present members in the person or by proxy whether uh, were allowed and uh, having not less than one tenth of the voting power. So uh, firstly through electronic means, if voting is held through electronic means, then the central government shall prescribe uh, the class or classes of companies which shall uh, have the right to vote through electronic means. Then demand for poll. Before the declaration of the result of any resolution, the poll shall be taken uh, by the company and accordingly the, uh, accordingly the people of uh, sh having share capital uh, shall be, uh, decision shall be taken according to them. Then the demand for a poll may be withdrawn at any time by the persons who made the demand. The, uh, adjournment of the meeting or appointment of chairman of the meeting shall be taken forth. A poll demanded on any question other than adjournment of the meeting or appointment of the chairman shall be taken at such time not being later than 48 hours from the time when the demand was made as the chairman of the meeting may direct. Where a poll is to be taken, the chairman of the meeting shall appoint such a number of persons as he deems necessary to scrutinize the poll process and votes given on the poll and to report thereon to him in the manner as may be prescribed. Subject to the provisions of this section, the chairman of the meeting shall have the power to regulate the manner in which the poll shall be taken. <clears throat> The result of the poll shall be demand uh, shall be deemed to be the decision of the meeting on the resolution on which the poll was taken.
so now this was about the pole on which the meeting uh, in uh, which meetings the poll shall be considered for uh, the result and the chairman shall have the power to regulate the voting process then next we have postal ballot nothing which standing anything contained in this act a company shall in respect of such items of business as the central government may by notification declare to be transacted only by means of postal ballot and may in respect of any item of business other than ordinary business or and any business in respect of which directors or auditors have the right to be heard at the meeting transact by means of postal ballot in such manner as may be prescribed instead of transacting such business at a general meeting the meeting provided that any item of business required to be transacted by means of postal ballot under clause a may be transacted at a general meeting by a company which is required to provide a facility to members to vote by electronic means under section 108 in the manner provided in that section if a resolution is assented by uh, to by the requisite majority of the shareholders by means of postal ballot it shall be deemed to have been duly passed at the general meeting convened in that behalf so now in a postal ballot uh, the there shall be a system in which uh, the business to be transacted has to be declared by a notification and by a means of postal ballot and uh, the all the requisites shall be followed as per the majority of the shareholders uh, consent then circulation of uh, circulation of members resolution a company shall on requisition in writing of such number of members as required under section 100 give notice to members of any resolution which may be moved and is in, and is intended to be moved at a, a meeting and uh, circulate to members any statement with respect to the matters referred to in proposed resolution or business to be dealt with at the meeting a company shall not be bound under this uh, section to give notice of any resolution or to circulate any statement unless a copy of requisition signed by the requisitors or to or more copies which have which be have between them contain the signatures of all the requisitors is deposited at the registered office of the company <coughs> in the case of a requisition requiring notice of a resolution not less than 6 weeks before the meeting in the case of any other requisition not less than 2 weeks before the meeting and there is uh, there is deposited or tendered with the requisition a sum reasonably sufficient to meet the company's expenses in giving giving effect there provided that if there are, uh, if after a copy of requisition requiring notice of resolution has been deposited at the registered office of the company an annual general meeting is called on a date with uh, within 6 weeks after the copy has been deposited the copy although not deposited within the time required by the subsection shall be deemed to have been properly deposited for the purposes there the company shall not be bound to circulate any statement as required by clause b of subsection 1 if on the application either either the company or of any other person who claims to be aggrieved the central government by order declares that the rights conferred by the section are being abused uh, to secure needless publicity for defamatory matter an order made under subsection 3 may also direct the direct that the cost incurred by the company by virtue of this section shall be paid to the current company by the requisite is not withstanding that they are not parties to the application if any default is made in complying with the provisions of this section the company and every officer of the company who is in default shall be liable to a penalty of 25000 rupees so uh, from here we can understand understand that circulation of members uh, resolution whatever is being done a proper notice shall be given and according to that the company shall decide and it shall be circulated among all the members of the company and the company shall be bound uh, to give notice of resolution and uh, circulate the same in the statement and uh, proper copy of requisition signed by all the requisitors or two or more copies have to be submitted then uh, provided that 
provided that if after a copy of requisition requiring no requiring notice of a resolution has been deposited at the registered office and uh, an annual general meeting is called within the date of 6 weeks after the copy has been deposited the copy although not deposited within the time required by this subsection shall be deemed to have been properly deposited for the purposes thereof then the company shall be bound to, uh, to circulate any statement as required by clause b and subsection 1 if the application either uh, who claims to be aggrieved by the central government by order declares that the rights conferred by this section are being abused to secure uh, secure the needless publicity or uh, for a defamatory matter so these are the clauses related to circulation now next we have representation of president and governors in meetings <coughs> the president of india or the governor of a state if he, he is a member of a company may appoint such person as he thinks fit to act as his representative at any meeting of the company or at uh, a, at any meeting or of any class of members of a, the company a person appointed to act under subsection 1 shall for the purposes of this act be deemed to be a member of such a company and shall be entitled to exercise the same rights and powers including the rights uh, to vote by proxy or and pass up and postal ballot as the president <coughs> or as the case may be the governor could exercise as a member of the company so there is representation of president and governors in the meeting and in that case they shall represent at the meeting of the company uh, and they shall appoint a person who will be the representative for the meeting then representation of corporations at meeting of uh, companies and of creditors a body corporate whether a company within the meaning of this act or not may if it is a member of a company within the meaning of this act by resolution of its board of directors or other governing body authorize such person as he thinks fit to act as its representative at a meeting of the company or at any meeting of any class of members of the company if it is a creditor including a holder of debentures of a company within the meaning of this act by resolution of its uh, directors or other governing body authorize such a uh, person as it thinks fit to act as its representative at a meeting uh, of any creditors of the company held in pursuance of this act or of any rules made there under or in pursuance of the provisions contained in any, any debenture or trust deed as the case may be <coughs> a person authorized by resolution under subsection 1 shall be entitled to exercise the same rights and powers including the rights to vote by proxy and by postal ballot on behalf of the body corporate which he represents as the body could exercise if it were an individual member creditor or holder of debentures of the company ordinary or special resolutions now let us understand which shall be ordinary or special resolution a resolution shall be an ordinary resolution if the notice required under this act has been duly given and it is not required to be passed by the votes cast whether on a show of hands or electronically or on a poll as the case may be in favor of the resolution including the casting vote if any of the chairman by members who being entitled to do. vote in person or when proxies are allowed by proxy or by postal ballot exceed the voting if any uh, any cast against the resolution by members so entitled and voting a resolution shall be a special resolution when the intention to propose the resolution the resolution as a special resolution has been duly specified in the notice calling the general meeting or other intimation given to the members of the resolution then the notice required under this act has been duly given and the votes cast in favor of the resolution whether on a show of hands or electronically or on a poll as the case may be by members who are being entitled to do to a vote in a person or by proxy or by postal ballot are required to be uh, to to be not less than three times the number of votes if any cast against the resolution by members so entitled and voting 
So this was about company meetings. This was also about the resolution. That is when special resolution is passed. Uh, how, what provisions are to be followed when ordinary resolutions are passed? What provisions are to be followed? It was about that. So with this we come to the end of first chapter. Uh, end of the third chapter. So let us start with the fourth chapter after this. So uh, chapter 4 e-governance and winding up of a company. Now what does e-governance mean? Let us understand about that and what is winding up. We shall be understanding how a company is being wound up by the, uh, by the company's act. E-governance meaning importance uh, of e-governance. Introduction and meaning of e-governance. The Companies Act 2013 has introduced Section 398 which empowers the central government to introduce e-governance and facilitate electronic filing of form, returns and documents with the registrar of companies. In the changing competitive environment, information is the heart of the, all the activities and the role of information is extremely important. Not only for the companies but also in governing a country or a state. The internet has brought many changes in the society and has become an indispensable part of many activities. It has brought the new methods of communication, work study, education, interaction, entertainment, health, trade and commerce. This unit uh, highlights the importance of the information technology enabled form of governance in the administration of the company. So, as it is not possible for every person to go to the registrar and uh, fill every form and submit and everything physically has to be done. Instead of that, the, uh, with the changing technology, even the, the Companies Act has upgraded and they have decided to, uh, to provide everything online and that can be filled and submitted directly from the company's office itself. <coughs> Now, definition of e-governance. Some widely used definitions are as well. According to the World Bank, e-governance refers to the use uh, used by government agency of information technology such as wide area networks, the internet and the mobile computing that have the ability to transform relations uh, with the citizens, businesses and other arms of the government. These technologies can, say, uh, can serve a variety of different ends, better de delivery of government services uh, to citizens, improved interactions with business and industry, citizens empowerment uh, through uh, access to information or more efficient government uh, management. The resulting benefits can be less car corruption, increased transparency, greater convenience, revenue growth and uh, cost reduction. So, if we provide everything through uh, online systems, it will be a great help for every person. Firstly, to transform relations with the citizens, then uh, to grow the businesses, then uh, it shall help in technology to serve government services and uh, also improved interactions with the business and industry and citizen empowerment. Then next is the definition given by UNESCO. UNESCO defines e-governance as uh, governance refers to the exercise of political, economic and administrative authority in the management of a country's affairs including citizens' art articulation of their uh, articulation of their interests and exercise of their legal rights and obligations. E-governance uh, may be understood as the performance of uh, his uh, governance via the electronic medium in order to facilitate an efficient, speedy and transparent process of dis disseminating information to the public and uh, other agencies and for performing government administration activities. So UNESCO says that it is very important to have a governance which refers to in a political, economic and administrative authority in the management of country's affairs and also gives legal rights and obligations and also to uh, have a speedy and efficient functioning and transparent uh, transparency in the governing system. Then Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, 
former president of India has visualized e-governance in the Indian context to mean a transparent smart e-governance with seamless access, secure and authentic flow of information across the interdepartmental barrier and providing a fair and unbiased service to the citizens. So, uh, it is, he says that it is a smart and a transparent way of uh, creating the uh, authentic flow of information which, is, uh, which goes from interdepartmental barrier and providing a fair and unbiased services to the citizens. Then meaning of e-governance. The word electronic in the term e-governance implies technology driven governance. E-governance is the application of information and communication technology for delivering government services. Electronic governments really. governance refers to the online delivery of information and services related to the activities and processes involved in governing a country or state through internet or other digital means. Electronic governance is the application of uh, information technology to government functioning in order to bring about simple, moral, accountable, responsive and transparent, smart governance. Uh, governance E-governance e involves processes like online delivery of information and services related activities governing a country or a state through the internet or other digital means. In short, e-governance refers to the use of information technologies like local area network, wide area network, the internet and the mobile computing, etc. By the government agencies such as uh, such use of information technologies will be beneficial to give a uh, better delivery of government services to citizens, improved interactions with the uh, business and industry, citizen empowerment through access to information or more efficient government management, increased transparency, less corruption, greater convenience, cost reduction, revenue growth, etc. are the resulting benefits of e-governance, e-commerce, health businesses to transact with each other more efficiently B2B and brings the customers closer to business, business to communication. Uh, on the similar lines, e-governance aims to make interaction between government uh, and uh, government and uh, citizens G2C, uh, government and business enterprise G2, G2B and interagency relationships G2G. Uh, more friendly, convenient, transparent and inexpensive. Information technology should be used strategically to radically improve organizational effectiveness. Traditionally, the interaction between citizens or business and government agencies used to take place in government office. Now it has been observed that e-governance and uh, e-governance enhances the citizens and businesses across the government information and services and provides new ways to improve, increase citizen participation in democratic functioning of the government. Effective change in management is necessary for the success of e-governance. Along with proper telecom infrastructure technology and software, a successful transition from a manual to electronic process requiring ch requires change in various established procedures. E-governance therefore means the application of ICT to transform the efficiency, effectiveness, transparency and accountability of exchange of information and transaction between governments, between government agencies, between government and citizens, between government and business. So these are the various ways in which uh, they, we can transform the uh, technology and e-governance has helped in uh, help us in growing the business and uh, the relations between different uh, setups like government and business then uh, the government and its citizens government and business enterprises then uh, inter the agencies relationship all these things have improved for betterment and uh, as technology is developing we can see a good change in the system of operating and as uh, we are seeing that uh, everything has been changing as per time and technology has been improving so uh, with this we shall stop here in the next class i shall be teaching advantages of e-filing importance of e-governance